G'day viewers, Alan here. Thanks for joining me in the workshop. Um, this is a, a milling arbor. Be a familiar piece of equipment to many of you. This particular beast has a 75 millimeter cut head, um, a 27 millimeter nose, and an NT40 shank. Um, I want to be able to mount things on a 27 millimeter nose like that in my rotary table, but it has an NT3 socket, so this obviously doesn't fit. So I'm going to make um, one of these, but for NT3. I have a piece of stock already loaded in the lathe, ready to go. So let's get over there and get started. I'm going to start by facing centering and putting an M12 thread in. Um, centering and drilling and tapping. So for M12 the recommended tapping drill is 10.2. Well the closest I've got to that is a letter Y, which is slightly higher, slightly bigger. I don't suppose that's going to matter at all. So we'll go with that. And a bit of oil on there. I should think that'll be deep enough. But I'm going to open, up, open up a little bit with a boring bar anyway. So I just want to open the, uh, the, the start of the hole there out to a bit more than 12 millimetres for three, just to make it easy to get the bolt to start. So that should just be enough to uh, make the bolt um, start easily in the hole. Get a few threads in this hole. Unfortunately, this tap doesn't have a, a centre in the end, so I have to use this sort of a tap handle, which doesn't give me very much leverage. We seem to be getting there. Switch over to a handle that gives me a bit more leverage and feel. Nearly there, nearly at the bottom I think. Don't need to go any further anyway. So that threads for the uh, draw bolt that will hold the uh, adapter in a spindle. Okay, so now I'm going to start roughing this down um, prior to doing cutting the taper and the major diameter of an MT3 is 23.825mm um, and I want to have a little bit of a shoulder here, not much, so I'm going to um, finish, well, I take it down to about 24.7 before I start doing the taper and uh, so I'm going to rough it down to 28, I'm going to go in 2mm um, depth of cut passes. So I thought it would be interesting to check the temperature of this piece. And I've got a, a digital um, thermometer non-contact thing, but um, it can't get a reading on that, it's too shiny I guess. But if I put a bit of tissue paper on there, which I guess interferes with the heat reading a little bit, but probably not very much. Um, I don't know if you can see that now, I think. So I think you got that just before it vanished. It was about 39 degrees anyway. So it is actually quite a lot cooler than I was expecting, considering how much has been hogged off. But um, 
as you can see down here there's a lot of chips and they, they took a lot of the heat with them I guess. Anyway, time for a bit of a clean up and then uh, start coming to uh, proper size. Alright, we're getting set for the final pass here. We're currently on, I don't know whether you'll be able to see that, 25.1 and we want 24.7. So we've got to take 4.4 off the diameter. Here we go. So let's see where we finished up. We're looking for 24.7. Oh, well, you can see that. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. All right, so just got to clean this end up and we start cutting the taper. Okay, now I want to do my Morse 3 taper. So I need to set the uh, top side or compound rest, whichever you want to call it, uh, over to the correct angle. And I'm using a, a sign bar. Uh, for that, especially made sign bar uh, from Tangent Gym. Um, give him a plug. It's a good bit of kit. Anyway, I've got um, a gauge block stack under there for the correct thickness. And the idea now is to run the carriage backwards and forwards until the uh, um, dial gauge reading doesn't change. So let's start off going this way. And we can see that that is pushing the gauge. So presumably if we come back this way We'll see that's not, so we can um, gently very gently tap this way. Don't really want to overshoot because oh, tapping from this side is easy. And just nip that up, see how much we've improved things. getting closer. I'll keep fiddling around like this until I've uh, got it and I'll bring you back. Well a blind man would be very happy to see that over that distance that's negligible. So we're going to tighten the uh, top slide bolts up and uh, get on with the job. Uh, kick off with a a light cut just to see how it's all all going. So that should be enough of a taper to see whether we're in the right track. So we'll just uh, show it this uh, four to three sleeve. Well, that's feeling, yep, yeah. you're definitely on the right track. So this end is supposed to finish up at 19.76, so in theory I've still got some ways to go. the tiger stripes are all about. Perhaps I should check the tip. Well the tip did have a small chip so I expect that's what was the problem was there. I'll turn him around. See if we can improve the surface finish. Oh actually we'll see how far this goes on. Yeah so it's a little ways to go. We're going at 20.5. Okay, so I've cleaned it up, given it a bit of spit and polish, and um, I'm quite happy with it. <laughs> Even with that light touch, it needs the um, thing over to uh, oops, uh, free the, to, to break the taper. So I think that's going to be fine. All right, well that's got this piece sorted, or this end sorted, but to put the features on this end, I really want to put this in the, uh, use the Morse taper that's in the lathe spindle, but that's an MT6. 
and so um, I need MT6 to MT3. But I've got an MT6 to MT4, so I could use that in conjunction with a, a 4 to a 3, or I could make up a whole new one. Um, I think I'll look in the first instance how it works out if I use the two um, sleeves that I've got put together to get from 6 to 3. Okay, so I'm set up in the uh, Morse taper and the spindle nose. I haven't tried to do turning like this before in any of my lathes, so it's a bit of an adventure. And I don't have the security of a draw bolt um, because I'm using um, an adapter which um, doesn't have a, it's got a blind end on it. So I'm keen to have as much security as I can, so I'm going to put a centre uh, in here and uh, use that as much as I can for the various operations. I don't have um, a lot to do here, so I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. Anyway, let's, let's see how we go. Let's get the, get the centre in. Alright, well let's start uh, getting some tooling set up. You can have a ringside seat <laughs> while I try and sort something out. The main thing I've got to do is turn a boss on the end of this, which will look like that. It's a um, 27mm diameter boss, so that's really the only thing I've got to put on the end here. It will be taking light cuts, so I'll use the, uh, the finishing tool rather than roughing tool. Right, so am I inside the arc of this thing? No. So perhaps you can see the problem is that the this this guard is hitting this bolt on the tool post. Okay, so I think I've any bird squawking in the background there. Uh, I think I've found a way around the problem by uh, pulling this uh, end bolt out and removing the handle from the guard and carefully positioning <laughs> the cutter and everything. I've got just enough room now to uh, to do the business without having to remove the guard. Although I must say, when I've finished, I might well revisit this and perhaps uh, create a hinged piece here or something. I don't know. Anyway, for the moment, I can carry on. So what I've got to do now is um, put a nose on the end here, which is uh, 27 in diameter and 20 uh, long. Now, because of the way this is all set up, I don't want to be taking heavy cuts. I don't think there's really any chance of this turning in the in the socket, but why well, give it the chance to to try? So light cuts, I think. So off we go, and we'll be taking some uh, quite shallow cuts to start with, so a bit more confidence in this. So we're taking um, a millimetre off the diameter, and we shall see how that goes. Okay, well I'm currently sitting on 28. Um, I want to get as close to 27 as I can without being over 27. So I've got a millimetre left to come off the diameter. I'm going to go with a 0.5 cut and then uh, measure up again. So we're shooting for 27.5 this time. Alright, what do we get? 27.517. Right, uh, well this is it. This is the uh, make or break. So we're gonna, going to go set at 27.000. And hopefully, if anything, we'll be slightly over, but within uh, emery paper distance. distance. Uh, fingers crossed.
All right, time to get my homework marked. Twenty-six point nine nine one. Yeah, twenty-six point nine nine. Well, I guess that's uh, close without being over. Be happy with that, I guess. So I've just got to clean this face up now. All right. I guess just knock those corners off. So I suppose we can do a bit of a test fit using this uh, cutter, which is supposed to fit a 27 stub nose. Yeah, I like that. It just goes on with no, no movement that I can feel. It's good. So it's time to knock this out of the taper. Just got to the centre here to catch it when it comes free. Right, we're free. So I've still got to get my uh, six morse taper piece out. Okay, well this is uh, one of the uglier lash ups I've ever done. There's a lump of threaded rod that was lying around the place, 20 mil, and uh, various bits and packing and the like. This goes right through the uh, uh, Morse taper sleeve that's in the end of the spindle and there's a double nut in the back of that and uh, Well, let's hope for the best See if we can pull this sucker out oh, Easy as that Certainly beat that uh, much better than beating the crap out of it with a hammer Yep, she's out. Moved over to the rotary table now to uh, drill the and tap the hole in the nose here. Now the rotary table in fact is what this arbor is intended for as you'll see in another project. Um, now the reason I didn't drill and tap the hole in the lathe is that uh, with the setup there this was just pressed into a sleeve there was no draw bolt to hold it in place and uh, if the drill catches it's possible I think for it to pull the uh, on, on the shank here and perhaps release the taper well in this uh, setup there is I've actually got a, a draw bolt fitted on the back side here so it isn't possible for for that to happen well that's my thinking anyway also concentricity isn't uh, really that much of an issue for the uh, this hole and the thread because the location of the uh, cutting head which will be onto this arbor is on this uh, dimension here, this diameter. The, uh, the threaded hole really plays no hole in the alignment, it's just a securing feature. Anyway, that's why I'm doing it in the rotary table. I think that'll do. Only really only need about uh, 15 millimeters worth of thread, and even that's overkill. But I'm just uh, very wary about tapping into a blind hole. Anyway, have a bit of a clean up and come back for a tapping exercise. Uh, for what it's worth, by the way, I use a, a magnetic uh, pickup thing, and uh, when you're near big chunks of metal, it wants to stick to them. So I found it uh, helpful to have a that, that's just a top cut off a plastic bottle. Just allows me to move it around without it sticking all the time. Just a little tip. Uh, so we'll get it started with a good chamfer. Something like that should do the job. So now this is going to uh, really test the uh, the fit of the taper. Fingers crossed. Mm. 
All right so far. Back it out. Mm, seems to be doing all right. All right, if we go again. This is heart in the mouth stuff, this. All right, well, the chuck's slipping, so we switch over to um, using the T-bar. Well, that's all right, I've got a good start. Certainly better for it to slip in the chuck than slip down there. This is giving me a lot of confidence in the uh, fit of the taper in the socket. Okay, so with that done, we can have a trial fit up of this uh, head. Now, I haven't actually made this arbor for this head, it's for another project which you'll see in due course, but this is a good uh, test piece. Well, I think that's going to work out just fine. Okay, so now I want to cut, uh, um, cut my mate cutouts for drive dogs. And I'll be making the dogs uh, out of six, uh, 12 square material. So I want to be approximately six or a bit over six deep into here. So I'm hoping to make the cut in two passes, one at six millimetre deep and then uh, a clean up one at uh, 0.2. Um, and hopefully this uh, 12 millimetre end mill is stiff enough that it won't wander off course. And I've tried to do something like this before with a much smaller diameter end mill, it wandered off course. But, um, yeah, I mean, 6 mil depth of cut for something that's 12 diameter doesn't seem too extreme. We'll see how we go. Well, it seems to manage that all right, didn't it? Let's suck up some of these chips. There's not much light there for you to see, is there? Uh, put a bit more light. Yeah, perhaps it uh, makes it a bit easier to see. That's actually a pretty good uh, surface finish from that cut. So that turned out to be a pretty clean looking slot. And um, those uh, factory dogs are a pretty good fit so I could just use those. I'll never use this at the same time as the other thing so why not? So we can repeat on this side. So to accurately locate the holes in these dogs I've got a, um, a 0.203 dowel in here. You can possibly see that on the, on the, sh the shank. Anyway, that's a good fit, a nice fit in, uh, in the hole in the bottom of this thing just sit there and uh, I'll take it in until we just get to to there you can see at this stage it's not not binding anywhere so let's we'll take it in until it just starts to bind just at that point I'd say just feel <coughs> A touch of movement there. So we'll go with that because the screw is undersized on that diameter. We'll get a little bit of movement there. So I think we'll go with that. 21.75. So the uh, screws that go with this are number 10 UNC, uh, 24 TPI, and they want a 3.8 millimeter hole, tapping hole. Well, I've got a number 25, which is pretty close. 
I don't really want to go all the way through. So if we go in 11, we won't come out the other side. I don't know whether you saw that, but I managed to uh, vacuum up my drill. Anyway, retrieved it from the vacuum cleaner. So, ready to put um, a thread in here. Just before putting a tap into this hole, I thought I'd just uh, check my uh, tap in the uh, hole in the existing arbor. And the number 10 tap that I picked up didn't want to start in the hole in the arbor. When I dug more deeply I found that the hole in the arbor is actually 3 sixteenths NS. So it's still 24 TPI, same as the number 10 uh, national course, but it's, uh, the, the, the tap size hole is slightly smaller. So this screw I think will go into either, but my number 10 taps won't go into the uh, 3 sixteenths NS hole. So I've got a, as it happens, a 3 sixteenths NS tap and even though my holes might be slightly oversized because I used the number 25 instead of a number 26 we'll still use this uh, 3 sixteenths NS tap. So that's a subtlety. First time I've come across that I don't think the distant difference is uh, worth getting excited about but there is a difference and uh, as it happens I don't have a bottoming tap in that size so uh have to wait and see whether or not I can tap deeply enough. Alright, after a bit of dicking around I've decided to use my number 10 bottoming tap. The uh, number, uh, sorry, the 3 sixteenths UNS that I had was a bit of an intermediate uh, um, grind on the tap and it wasn't going to give me enough threads. So it was either drill all the way through or give this one a try. I think we'll probably get away with this. But yeah, that's the bottom of the hole. Hopefully that's put enough threads in. If not, we'll have to drill all the way through. Let's see how this works out first. See if I've got enough threads. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Alright, that's what we'll do the other one the same. So I've now finished all of the machining uh, on the, uh, the arbor and it's time to pull it out of the socket in the rotary table. So um, I've got a draw bolt lash up here and I've got a, a safety bolt in the back so it can only come out a little bit. But uh, yeah, okay, well, time to get it out. She's in there tight. I'm not sure what gave then. Oh yes, that's yep. That's good. Oh, the lash up seemed to work just fine. Uh, get quite a bit of force with some of these things so uh, the trick obviously is to do it while keeping things under control and then we have our uh, arbor I'm oh, pretty happy with that well I think that turned out pretty well the dogs go in nicely, screws line up, that's all good.
and the uh, this cutter does actually of course still fit on nice fit on there so that's great although that's not what this arbor is for um, I've got something else in mind for this in the rotary table and uh, here's a hint thanks for joining me I hope to see you on the next one